Hello and welcome to TSC. This week's programme is a bit different to usual. I've been chatting with David Florent about ways to get more people into shooting. We discuss some of the obstacles and things that the shooting organisations might do, as well as the efforts of individual shooting grounds. Plus, as this channel heads towards 10,000 subscribers, we're giving you the chance to win a shooting lesson and a sealant shooting vest, together worth over £200. And of course, the game season's underway, with grouse shooting starting yesterday, the glorious 12th of August. All that coming up after this. The new game season started yesterday, the glorious 12th, with shooters out after grouse on the moors of Scotland and the north of England. These pictures are from the Rottle Estate in the Angus Glens, which Basque highlighted for its important conservation work, as well as its contribution to the local economy. The estate provides habitat for more than 100 different bird species, and the income from grouse shooting not only supports the wages of estate staff, but also local businesses, such as garages, shops and hotels. Grouse shooting is reckoned to be worth £32 million in Scotland alone, part of the £155 million value of country sports to Scotland, supporting the equivalent of 8,800 full-time jobs. After a poor season last year, grouse numbers generally appear to be recovering, but shoot days are still being restricted or cancelled in some places due to the lack of a shootable surplus. Of course, the 12th brought the usual rash of anti-shooting propaganda in the media, but I felt that this year, shooting did a better job of presenting its case in the papers and on TV. Basque's Ian Danby put up a good show on the telly against the ghastly Chris Packham. And there were some great positive stories out there, like this one in the Scottish field. My favourite, though, was this piece in The Telegraph by the cricketing legend Ian Botham. He didn't pull any punches in his attack on the Labour Party's ignorant call for a review of grouse shooting. So that's the game season underway. I'm unlikely to get anywhere near any grouse this year, but I'm certainly looking forward to the pheasant season, which isn't too far off now. Meanwhile, I sat down with David Florent the other day to talk about how we can get more people involved in shooting of all sorts, but particularly clay shooting. What sparked the conversation was the fact that this channel is well on its way to 10,000 subscribers. When I looked this morning, we had just over 9,600. David wants to hit that magic 10,000 figure in time for the Oxford Festival of Shooting on the 7th of September. So he's decided to offer a prize of a shooting lesson and a sealant shooting vest, together worth over £200. The interview is quite long, so if you don't want to watch the whole thing, you can skip to the end to find out how you can be in with a chance of winning that prize. Anyway, here's our interview, and I'll be back at the end to explain. So we've got, uh, Dame Design's had a, a little bit of a misunderstanding, a disagreement on certain things about the channel. <laughs> yeah, that's... <laughs> like that. um, the whole idea why we launched the channel off the back of the school's challenge and why we changed the branding of it of TSC is there's loads of channels out there. You've got Field Sports Channel, you've got The Shooting Show, you've got... Um, you've got a whole lot of whole load individuals of going pigeon individuals. shooting and what have you as well. Yeah. And our one is trying to be a little bit different. We're trying to get an audience, a new audience into shooting. And I had the conversation with James this morning and he said, the problem is you've got loads of people shooting and people come on stag do's and hen parties and have a go days all over, up and down the country. But actually, how many of those people actually take up the sport? Very few. We tried to do a, an advertising campaign on local radio station. Obviously, shooting at the moment, it's not allowed to advertise on the radio. You're not allowed to advertise gun clubs. So shooting has a little bit of an issue of getting out there to a new person. We can get out there to you, to somebody that shoots fairly easily, but it's getting out to that new person. I'll pass you over to James what he thinks. <laughs> That's not how you do an interview. <laughs> oh God, here's what James thinks. Yeah, uh, I mean, what I was saying earlier is 
I mean, you, you you had a number for the for the number of people that you get through uh, through the school here every year who've perhaps never fired a gun in their life, never picked up a gun in their life, and it was it's thousands, thousands of people every year, and and yeah, they come along, they have a stag do, they have a bit of fun. That was that was nice, right? I've done shooting, and away they go, they never come back, and uh, it's an area where I think shooting hasn't traditionally been very good at, at hooking people in and bringing them into the sport and making them you know making them feel they're part of the shooting community it's not that we're unfriendly or we don't want them it's just they we we don't do a good job of leading them into the sport to become shooters in a, in a nice gentle way in the way that you know perhaps the the scouts movement um you know, brings people in gently, they, they come and have a go, they, they get a little badge for tying a knot, they come back next week and they get another badge for tying another knot, whatever it might be. Um, they, they, they're very good, those sort of organisations, at making people feel part of, part of something and, and giving them targets to aim for, just nice easy steps um, each week, each month, whatever it might be. And, and I think we're missing a we're missing an opportunity when when so many people come not just to you but all up and down the country you know clay shooting is just one of those things people think of when they think stag do uh, or hen do or whatever um, and we get we get loads of people give it a go and then never really consider becoming a shooter um, and, I, and I think if the if the the trade and the the shooting community generally put their minds to it. We could we could come up with with ways of encouraging people, as I say, in gentle steps, just to gradually become a little bit more, you know, like fishing. Tease them a bit, reel them in gently, um, and uh, I think it's something we should we should look at. And it would take a little bit, take a bit of funding. It would take a bit of planning. It probably needs to, you know, for the industry to. Put marketing people on the job who really know this stuff and can can make it work. And why do you think? Obviously, shooting's been around for a long time. Um, mm. Probably older than older than me. Definitely older than you. Um, we've older got than, we've got all these organisations. So you've got Basque, you've got the CPSA, you've got Countryside Alliance, you've got the Gun Trade Association. Mm. They're all doing their own little jobs. Yeah. yeah. Why do you think? we haven't been able to, as an organisation or as an industry, why do you think we haven't been able to pull it all together and do that? I don't, I don't think it's just us. I mean, I, I think you could say the same about go-karting or golf or, you know, any, any sport would like to have more people involved. And they're made up of small independent businesses who are all just doing their thing and they advertise locally and they bring in a few people and they... they they either succeed or fail based on how many people they get through and whether they're able to make a profit on it. Um, but you haven't got a nationwide campaign to to get people to get people through, and I think there's there's a limit to what any organisation can do. I mean, they've only got limited funds, and you know, if you want to if you want to reach everybody in the country and persuade them to change their views, well. You know, it's an expensive business and, and you've got to have the media behind you, you've got to have the politicians behind you, and that's something we really do struggle with because, you know, guns have this negative association. Especially nowadays, most people, you know, live in the city all their life, all the town. They don't, they don't grow up in a farmhouse with a shotgun by the door where it's just an everyday tool like a knife and fork or whatever. Um, so the only time they come across a gun is is in a in a bad context um and they don't see they don't see why anyone would want to get involved with shooting unless they had some bad intent you know um so you you you're you're fighting you're fighting the media and the politicians to to even get them to uh, to the shows you found with the radio you know i mean the radio's got uh, got their set of rules they have to follow and the rules say no gun clubs no no guns you know so what can you do you've got to you've got to be a bit inventive and find another way of getting the message out there to people who um who otherwise might never hear of it but there's a lot of awareness of of shooting out there um and particularly clay shooting i mean it helps occasionally when you get to shooting on the olympics or something on the tv but but they've taken it out of the commonwealth now 
They have. I mean, you could argue whether that was deliberate or just, you know, it didn't it didn't neatly fit in what their plans were for the for those games. And what do you think? What do you think? The sport. I mean, we do we do quite a lot here. Obviously, the schools challenge. How many other sports do you know that actually a thirteen year old could win a car? Yeah, that's quite something. <laughs> that is quite something. And and despite all that, you know, you still struggle to. Uh, I mean, obviously, you know, shooting isn't for everybody. Um, it's it's not a an outrageously expensive sport, but it's neither is it a cheap sport. So not everybody can afford it. Um, it's as expensive or as cheap as you want to make it, really. Up to a point, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you um, can get into shooting for under a grand. You can, but then you then you're going to keep keep coming back shooting, otherwise you're going nowhere. So. But you do the same is, with golf. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, if you play golf. I've never played golf in my life. <laughs> I had no intention but of it, yeah. How much, how um, much is a set of golf clubs cost? Or well, you've got the initial cost, haven't you? And then you've got the ongoing cost of, of whatever club memberships and fees you pay every, every, every time you go. And when we go shooting, we've got to pay to pay the ground for the, for the targets and refs and whatever. And, and we've then got to pay for the cartridges. So, um, you know, every time you go shooting, the more you shoot, the more money you pay. It's as simple as that. And... Yeah, not everyone at different stages in your life you can afford perhaps a little more or a little less, but not everyone can afford to keep doing that week in, week out. Um, so it's it's not it's not a totally egalitarian sport that anybody can go down to the local recreation ground and do it for nothing, like running or whatever, you know, some of these other things that people get into. Football doesn't really cost a lot of money, does it? No, no. Cost of a football and <laughs> couple of jumpers to put down for the goalposts and that's it um so so yeah we've got to be realistic about uh, you know we can't expect everybody to come shooting but uh, there are a lot of people out there who are looking for something fulfilling and fun in their life who could afford to go shooting and could really get into it and would love it and it, it's it's a question of showing them what shooting is all about perhaps getting over any misconceptions they might have about uh, about how we're all rednecks or whatever it might be, you know, because we're actually quite normal people, really. Um, that it's not scary, that it's not going to hurt, you know, all those things that people worry about. But we've got this massive pool of people who who come and give it a go as a, as a kind of a one-off, bit of a special occasion thing, um, in the same way that people maybe go go karting for a stag do or something like that, you know, and. And they, they see that as a, a bit of a special thing, you know. And then rather than rather than let them try it once and then drift away, I mean, okay, that's great. We've we've got them we've got them out there in the big world going, oh, I went shooting once, it was, you know, nobody got hurt, it was fun, we enjoyed ourselves. Um, but they're not coming back and taking up the sport as a regular shoot. And why do you think that is? There's a lot of reasons why people don't continue with things. I mean, we've all done it. We've all tried something and thought, well, that was a bit of fun, but you know, life gets in the way and you don't go back and do it again. Um, partly it's the time. People have got a lot of time commitments with family and work and friends and all the rest. Um, I, I think shooting generally could improve improve the facilities. I mean, you know, you've got a nice clubhouse here and a nice restaurant, but you've also got some potholes in the road. <laughs> and, you know, the signposts by the road perhaps don't bring people in as much as they could, you know. The, uh, and you can look around at shooting grounds around the country and some are really quite dire and not yeah. looking very inviting. Um, and I, I think, you know, we could certainly improve the look and ambiance of shooting grounds but that's something for the individual grounds to do for themselves really you can't expect an organization to to fund every club in the country yeah. smartening itself up and and that's a kind of a chicken and egg because when you get more people through you're making more money you can afford to put that sort of investment in so it's easy to say but it's not so easy to make it happen um yeah there's a lot of facts and, and why do you think why do you think the TSC as a whole has been so successful? The YouTube channel, you know it's growing and growing. The YouTube channel's gone brilliantly. Um, I mean, yeah, there are much more successful YouTube channels out there, of course, because um, this is very much a niche, niche subject. Um, but we've, we've gone out of our way. I mean, 
yeah, okay, I do my best with the production values and all the rest of it. And we try and film with the limited resources we've got. We try and film things as, as nicely as we can and make it look appealing, sound appealing, all the rest of it. Um, but I think we're, we're making it accessible is probably the word. Um, we're, we're encouraging people who, we're, we're not sort of, we haven't got our noses in, our, in the air and we're saying, oh no, you're not posh enough to watch this channel or you, know, you haven't got enough money or whatever. We're, we're very welcoming to anybody who's got an interest in, interest in shooting. Um, come along and watch the channel, learn a bit about shooting, learn a bit about guns. Come along and give it a go, you know. And that hints very, by... That's very much our, our attitude, isn't it? Yeah, that hints by having Philips tyres. They yeah. were completely non-shooting related sponsor. Yeah. yeah. Um, the bloke that owns it, has, again, he was one of those ones. Mm. 20 years ago, he had a shoot on a yeah. stag do, and he's now back in and shooting. He did get into it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, that's great. That's great when people do. Yeah. Um, Oh, I think you were saying you you know you've you've got you've got ways of trying to entice people back. So you give them maybe a little card with a discount or something to come back and have another another lesson and all the rest of it, which is brilliant. And yeah, terrific to see companies outside of the shooting industry using shooting as a way of promoting themselves to the wider public, which is great. Yeah. You know, I mean, Philips Tires or any any company that sponsors anything, you know, they, they've got to see a return for that. They're not just doing it out of the goodness of their heart and say, oh, we love shooting, have some money. You know, it's it's got to be, they've got to see a, a return on their investment. And the, the confidence that a company like Philips Tires shows in sponsoring a channel like this and getting involved with the TSC, um, that's terrific. That makes me feel really good because they're, you know, they're, they're they're showing confidence in in shooting. They're showing confidence in the channel, and it's it's helping to get the message about shooting out there to people who would perhaps not come across it otherwise. And the same with Oak Garden or even MG. I mean, yeah. Oak Garden Machinery have done that, but MG or Lodge Hill Garage yeah. have put their hand in their pocket and they've supported us with the MGs. They've yeah. supported us with driving MGs around. Um, yeah. It's nice to have an MG. Okay, I know it's the old original MG. Everyone knows what it is. MG isn't really a shooting brand. No, not at all. Not at um, all. Um, and that's great. I mean, there, there, are, there are people out there who, you know, they, they, would, they would see that as a mistake to associate yourself with a sport which they think of as controversial, for want of a better word. Um, I mean, in actual fact, it's only controversial if people say it is. You know, there is nothing controversial about about going to a shooting ground and smashing some clay pigeons. It's it's fun. It's not dangerous. It's not leading people the wrong way. It, it teaches, as we've seen with the TSC, you know, it teaches youngsters all kinds of great qualities like responsibility and trust and all those things. Where you know they they're given they're given the the chance to to prove that they can be trusted with a, a potentially dangerous gun or whatever, and they, and they respond extremely well. Um, and they, yeah, they, they, it brings out a maturity and you perhaps wouldn't see if, uh, if they were following, following a different course. Um, so I, th I think it's, I think it's of course, I'm a shooter, but I think it's a great sport and I'd love to see more people getting involved at, a, at any age, but particularly youngsters, I think is very important. And we've got the Festival of Shooting coming up at the uh, beginning of September. Mm -hmm. um, and as always, I've always put, so many people do open days now and they just put a rack of guns out there. They have gun manufacturers and they just invite shooting people to it. I've tried to do something a little bit different. The Festival of Shooting, um, started 15 years ago. We have gun manufacturers, but we also have other things to try and encourage. There's a beer tent there, there's clothing marquees, there's um, have-a-go stands from um, slingshots to air rifles to archery. It's to try and encourage people to come and give shooting a go, to try and change people's mindset about shooting or about the countryside. Yeah, well, a lot of people don't, don't realise that you can actually go to the countryside and have a whole lot of fun. 
uh, they see the countryside as a place where it's, it's, it rains and it's muddy and the animals smell a bit off and um, you know the insects bite you and you go there for a picnic and instantly regret it and dash off home again. Um, it, it's great to be able to put on a show like that and show people what the countryside has to offer and that it is a load of fun and that we're actually very friendly welcoming people. We're not going to shake our fists and go, get off our land and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> so we've got 9,500 subscribers. Mm. How do you think we can get that to 10,000 subscribers by well, the festival? It will get there eventually. I don't believe, I mean, I'll, I watch the figures and you know, typically we get maybe a couple of hundred new ones each month. Well, that's not, at that rate, that's not going to get us there. We're on just over, I think we're getting towards 9,600. So we won't be far off, but I don't think we'll make the 10,000 so by... If we ask the audience, <laughs> yeah. this, is where we, this is where it comes. We can ask the audience to help us. If we put up yep. a prize, yep. two hour shooting lesson and a seed and skeet vest worth okay. 200 quid. Yep. And we ask the audience to share the channel around everywhere they possibly can. We'll also talk to the non-shooting related yep. sponsors to try and encourage more people. And let's see, I'll bet you a tenner, <laughs> on, if we can try and get to 10,000 subscribers okay. by the festival. Yep. And at the festival, that 10,000 subscriber, yep. you can then present, they can be presented by you, Absolutely. the prize. While I eat does humble pie. Think, <laughs> does everyone think it's a goer? Please put in the comments below if you think James is right, or I am right. I would be loved. I would love to be proved wrong. Uh, if we can make ten thousand by then, that would be terrific. Uh, I just, I, I'm, I don't have that confidence that we're going to make it. But um, so, no, prove me so wrong, let's please. try and uh, try and get the viewers on our side. Yeah. And obviously, the festival of shooting is on the seventh of September. So as well as that, try and all come down to the festival of shooting. Try and see if we can prove James wrong, and we can tell him to his face. <laughs> Not just on a screen. <laughs> Absolutely. No, please do. I would love to be proved wrong. That would be great. That would be a real achievement to get 10,000 in time for the festival, 7th of September. Yeah, that would be great. Terrific. Anything else you want to put? No. They can the still hear you, you know, no. if you whisper. <laughs> <laughs> so, there you have it. If you've got any thoughts on how we can get more people into shooting, do join in the conversation in the comments below. And if you fancy winning the shooting lesson and shooting vest, all you have to do is subscribe to this channel between now and the 7th of September. We'll put all the names into a hat and pick the winner on the day of the festival. The winner will be announced in our next programme after that. So thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and tell your friends about this channel too. And do please support the sponsors who make this channel possible. We honestly couldn't make these videos without them. We're back on Thursday with our next programme, out as always at 7.30pm. See you then!